And after the Chakra view, Agni Veer and caste census showdown in Parliament, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has responded to some of the criticism that the union budget has now received in the Lok Sabha by leaders of opposition. She has said that India is the fastest growing economy. She has added that the country's economy has seen a significant growth post-COVID due to capital expenditure push. She has also slammed the opposition parties for alleging that opposition parties have not been named in the budget in her opposition states rather opposition ruled states have not been named in the budget in her speech she is also aimed at bringing the fiscal deficit down to below 4.5 percent by 2025-26 she's also clarified about agriculture inflation and employment in her reply today after the opposition slammed her for not mentioning every state in the budget speech she replied by saying that the earlier budget speeches did not have all the state names mentioned and there is only an attempt by the opposition to create some sort of confusion. Leader of opposition Rahul Gandhi, remember, criticized the government and said that the BJP has made a chakra view in India. Using this metaphor, he highlighted that six people were controlling India's chakra view which is equal to the lotus formation. Let's quickly listen into what Rahul Gandhi had said. So, MP Anurag Thakur has now slammed Rahul Gandhi over his Chakraview jibe. He has criticized Rahul for his comments and targeted the Congress party as well as Shashi Tharoor. There's also been a showdown between the SP chief Akhilesh Yadav and Anurag Thakur on the matter of Agni Vs. Later, there was Rahul versus Anurag in the parliament where Rahul Gandhi claimed that uh, he will continue to fight for the caste census, to which Anurag Thakur has replied that those who don't know their caste should not be talking about a caste census. Lots of developments have taken place, uh, but some of the crucial points that continue to be raised by the opposition include the legal guarantee for farmers on MSP, as well as the issue of Agnivis, which has once again been raised uh, by uh, the opposition in parliament today. But what really is the plan of action going ahead? We have Shaina NC of the BJP. I also have with me Dr. Pooja Tripathi of the Congress and we have, uh, we'll be joined by Nasser Saleem of the Samajwadi Party and I also have with me ad Advocate Manasvi Thapar, political analyst with us. Let me begin with uh, Dr. Pooja Tripathi. Dr. Tripathi, understanding from you quickly, Rahul Gandhi gave a fiery speech at the parliament yesterday where he said that uh, the India bloc will guarantee legal guarantee on uh, MSP for farmers. How exactly does the India bloc hope to go about this plan? I think Devika and an electorally, you know, in a very healthy democracy, that uh, what we saw as an electoral feedback mechanism, it was a clear message when governed this uh, Better, yeah. to not reach up to the simple majority. It was clear message that where should your priorities lie? But what we saw the budget, the third term, the first budget, what we saw in budget, it was a flop exercise with absolute disregard to the aspirations of common people. Today, J.P. Nadda ji uh, mentioned about Gyan, you know, Garib, Yuva, Annadata and uh, Nari. So I'll, I'll just uh, break down his, uh, uh, his theology of uh, what they are focusing on. When we talk about Garib, when we talk about the poor class, when the budget allocation has been reduced for education sector, when health sector, when you have a cut down Narega allocations, when you have reduced allocations from Pradhan Mantri, Matritra Sahyog Yojana from National Security Assistance Program for the midday meal for the ICDS, I have no clue how you are targeting the poor. When you say uh, youth, the, uh, your NSSO, your NSSO, uh, NSSO's 7.1% unemployment rate is before us. Your economic survey 2024-25 calls that uh, below the age of 35, 65% of the youth are not employable. So that means taking that numbers only, we need 109.6 million skilled workers and there is no allocation and budget for the Skill India movement. And now I'm talking about Annadata, you have, you have just insulted them, you have resorted all kinds of violence on them and you have just denied the legal guarantee to MSP. How does 
a mere allocation of 1.52 lakh crore that you claim in budget would cover the half of input costs on all their agriculture when the inflation is ravaging across uh, uh, agricultural inputs and coming on to the nari there's nothing the uh, other than a, a hostel scheme for naris nothing they have not been able to address the huge glaring gender gap in the labor force participation rate so i'm saying that you know having big words having you know this fancy words and and, and i'll come to the middle class too you know governments very high time government should stop treating middle class as a milk milk cattle can only be taxed taxed and taxed until they die only india will grow if they want to create an uh, uh, economy in a super economy only india will grow when the middle class is empowered they are made free and they are unleashed on the economic sector but you have increased you have removed the indexation benefits no no chance of any investment you okay. have increased the capital gains tax you have you have just burdened the middle okay. class okay so okay so dr pooja tripathi your point being that nothing for the youth nothing for the farmers nothing for the middle class essentially yeah. i want shaina nc to now respond to that let me please say that the theme of the union budget 2024 is employment and when we talk about employment e stands for employment and education m stands for msmes p stands for productivity l stands for land o stands for opportunity y stands for youth m stands for the middle class e stands for energy security n stands for the new generation reforms and t stands for technology every aspect that i have spoken about is dealt with in the union budget page by page this is a futuristic vision for a viksit bharat this is an interim budget we must understand it's a continuation and a continuation of the signature and identity stands that have been taken vis-a-vis -vis employment and skilling there are five points and schemes which talk about these the iti institutes of training the apprentice act the fact that 500 top companies will be collating with the youth and will work on the shop floor uh it shows you that this is the first time we have even come up with such kind of innovative ideas the congress thought it's only right to give the youth 1000 rupees and 6000 rupees but by giving money what are you doing here you actually empowering their lives by giving them the opportunity as um, apprenticeships and for these internships there is a institute which trains these uh, young adults there is an apprenticeship uh, exposure the government is willing to pay for which the csr fund so it's a win win scheme which has been planned by our honorable uh, finance minister and of course endorsed by the prime minister we talk about technology institutes let's okay. understand this is industry revolution a time where robotic skilling for kids a uh, revolution of different kinds iti class 10 students for skill industry which takes 6 months to train but this is not where it stops you have the 10th standard or you have the engineers who have separate agendas and you have employee provident fund schemes you have a uh, 4.1 crore people and nine priorities whether it's youth employment msmes working okay. capital so we i think are on the correct path completely for those who are trying to change the narrative they know why they're trying to mislead people when the issue of msmes has also been addressed with eight measures All in right. place okay i want to bring in nasir salim uh, of the samajwadi party as well dr tripathi i'll come to you in just a moment and uh, nasir salim uh, akhilesh yadav has raised the issue of agni veers in parliament once again today uh, had also been a point of heated discussion in the run up to the elections itself what exactly is the opposition then hoping for as far as the matter of agni veers is concerned are you at some point expecting to create pressure on the government that there will be a complete roll back of the scheme devika good evening uh, thank you very much for having calling us on your panel there are two key things here uh, obviously as a responsible opposition and the largest opposition uh, in up and the third largest in the country now uh, we feel that agnivir that we've been voicing concern and opinion about it for the last several several quarters i must tell you and obviously there is the pressure is only going to get more and more with time we will continue to add pressure because there are two things here you see creating employment under contractual heads 
will not get you anywhere. Now, I just heard my fellow panelist, uh, you know, and I've, uh, we've appeared a few times in the past, fully respect her opinion. But here's the distinction, uh, Devika. Number one, you are creating employment through contracts in the top 500 companies, and you're creating Agnivir contractual jobs for corporates. So you, co you are basically creating corporate Agnivirs. Our thought process is very, very simple. If you see the current demands of the steel framework of India, hmm. which is the IS officer, all uh, government uh, officers, they demand, their all demands are to increase the eighth pay commission. They want increase in the eighth pay commission. At one end, there is inflation, which is all time high. At the other end, you have a very important integral part of the government whose officers were coming and saying, we want increments in eighth pay commission. And then you're trying to create an employment, so-called employment opportunity through contractual agreements. In principle and on book, it may be a good idea. It may not be implementable because a 12 month will not ensure that anybody gets skilled or even semi-skilled. Okay. I can tell you, I have run a very large a uh, private sector bank in a very senior position. And I can tell you this, Devika, from my personal experience, it was a multinational bank and you can't create jobs out of 12 months of contractual experience. Okay. Okay. Number two, number two, number three, the other very quick point, Devika, and then I have to, you know, uh, attend another meeting, so I'll just finish my quick points here. Number three, I overheard again about this MSME discussion. Now, I want to bring into your notice a very key number which will reflect very poorly on the government and on the state, specifically in Uttar Pradesh. In UP, the number of MSMEs, because we all agree, Devika, that MSME is a multiplier impact on jobs. See, it creates this great, uh, you know, uh, it gives you enough strength to create jobs. It's a great multiplier. In UP, and this is something which I can quote statistics, Right. UP has 95 lakh MSMEs. There we go. Please uh, note that number down. Can I tell you, and if I can ask my fellow panelists to tell me how many of them are registered, the answer will be shocking if they are able to give a right answer. Only 14% of 95 lakh are MSME registered. So what is this hula, you know, this, this, this entire noise about MSME creating employment, giving credit guarantee schemes, Okay. Okay. So, All right. There are fundamental issues, Devika, that we are wanting to address. There is pharma agrarian distress. There is corporate agreements you're trying to create. There is inflation. There is number of suicides happening in the farmers front. The middle income group is complaining. You've taken away a very important factor called indexation, which was brought in by the erstwhile government. Please understand that by taking away the only asset class. Indians are by and large savers and they invest their money, hard earned yes. money in real estate. Yes. Or they inherit real estate from their forefathers. Why penalize? Why have draconian laws? You could have reduced it to 12.5, made some changes to indexation rather than completely removing it. So, you know, the government of the day needs to consider more importance to be given on issues that are directly related to public benefit and not disincentivize. Okay. And as a leading opposition in UP, I can tell you this, that inflation is a big, big problem on the ground. And you're taking away indexation, you've introduced uh, 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 regressive taxations on, 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 you know, on something which the uh, members of the public are starting to participate. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay, Nasir, I've given you, I've given you a lot of time. Uh, Manasvi wants to come in as well. Manasvi, I'm sure you also have your thoughts now on everything that everyone has said, but I want to just ask a pointed question. Has the Bharatiya Janata Party been able to convince the people about the budget that it has released? I don't think so. I, I, I feel that this is a very compromised budget because of the alliance, not because Bharatiya Janata Party would have wanted this budget had they had got the mandate which they would have envisaged. Uh, this is a compromised budget, compromised on ideologies, compromised on the India growth story. Uh, this budget is, is not inclusive. When we, when opposition talks about 
uh, farmers they are in their own uh, proprietary to talk about it when they talk about unemployment how do you uh, serve the unemployment issue they are right why do i say that is there are 10 lakh vac vac uh, vacancies in in government of india itself uh, the government has shown no plan how are they going to fill it up uh, these kind of vacancies further uh, a, a student who takes up an education loan and is unemployed how do you cater to that particular family do you have a plan for that do you plan for a waiver do you plan for a relaxation on the interest and loan there is nothing on that particular front so this is uh, this budget is not going to go uh, towards the india growth story further when we talk about uh, inclusive bu budget it does not talk about manipur which has the uh, lowest per capita income and has the highest inflation in the country how are you going to cater to that and in in the budget in the tourism sector you have not included the northeast that itself is a blow while in the last 5 years you were talking about that the look east that look northeast strategy of the bjp is the most uh, important strategy of the bjp they are the only political party which is looking towards the northeast while congress had boycotted northeast since last 75 years and bjp is the only one which is looking and taking care of the northeast which uh, falls flat in this particular budget so i think this is a very very i won't say a negative budget it's a flat budget it does not give that buzz it does it does not give that uh, uh, Modi magic to that budget which was expected from the people and most importantly uh, the middle class is getting sandwiched and there is nothing for the middle class this is not an inclusive budget uh, farmers are not happy with it students are not happy with it a uh, large largest number of unemployment class have come down to this country how do you want to cater to that and you may have a theme on a budget but a budget does not work on a theme budget works on inclusivity but you can divide e m p l o y m e n t but that does not create it sounds good it may sound excellent in in a debate or in a parliamentary discussion but what is on the ground you are going to give to the people for example that a uh, vertical uh, transmission of hiv was uh, in in 2020 was the target that there should be uh, no transmission of hiv now it has moved to 2025 how do you plan to do that what have you done in the la in the last budget to this budget what is your white paper on that front what comes out in the debate is and, and in, in Nirmala Sitaraman Ji's speeches that in the past also Congress did not do it right. They did not include it the states. That's why that does not give you the power to that. You were supposed to be a party with a difference. You were supposed to be the party which talks about economics. You were the party which talks about entrepreneurs. You, where is, when, it, when, when I talk about skilling up, in the skilling up, there's a budget allocation. There's no budget allocation. It is shameful. When a country is going through unemployment and there is no idea that we should have a skilling up idea for this country, there is the same uh, educational pattern which has been working on, which is not giving any kind of employment to the people. So okay. we have to try to get new innovative ways of skilling up people. But the focus is not there. So with, with these kind of uh, pocket issues, and I feel when opposition is trying to make a statement, opposition is talking about Agnivir, what is stopping you to look into it? We look into it, have a committee on Agnivir scheme, let the opposition members be also be part of it, and let you also be part of it, and together decide for the Agnivir is, is this scheme a great scheme for our country or it is not it is okay to take back that scheme it is not on that ego issue that just because we came out with the scheme we have to go ahead with the scheme you cannot compromise the interest of the country as, okay. as, as my previous panelists rightly said that we are creating agnivis for the corporates if this is what is coming out i think that has to be relooked and it has to come with a commitment of a communication that we take the opposition together we bring the opposition on board and we talk about india first the approach has to be India first and it, it just because Rahul Gandhi is saying it or Samajwadi Party's Akhilesh Yadav is saying it, that's why we have to discard it. No, if if something from the opposition is coming out in the interest of the nation, okay. what is stopping the BJP to bring it on board? Let's, okay. ha, let's sit on the drawing board and recreate our a budget for the better India. Why don't we want to do that? What is stopping uh, the the people in power? So that is something which is not that rigidity, that arrogance is something not good. Can uh, I going reply? In line yes, with, yes. With the with the country's interest. Okay, all right. Uh, one, second. one quick point also. Nasir, one quick point. Nasir, uh, ten seconds because China and C. Uh, has okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yes. I can be respect. I just 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 ten seconds. The other quick big question is, and maybe uh, the BJP panelists can answer this is that you know this entire noise around make in india why i'm saying this is because you know corporate agni we just may end up like that this make in india uh, discussion i want to tell you the percentage contribution of manufacturing to india's gdp output 
is merely 13%. And it's struggling. Okay, it hasn't gone up. The number was supposed to be 25%. What are we talking about? You have to, you know, make realistic plans and then execute it on the ground. It can't be just, you know, fanfare announcements, mm, great yes. discussion on okay. books, textbooks, but okay. nothing is implementation. There's no implementation happening on the ground. Okay. Now, what is more severe is that the amount of unemployment and in UP specifically, Devika, please tell me. Yes, I, 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 I've seen it paper. myself. Yes, I've seen it myself in Uttar Pradesh. Right. Deep paper leak is a big, big issue. It's okay. a big issue. Yes, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Dr. Tripathi, I'll come to you in just a moment. Shana, and see you've been listening patiently. Lots I of questions to raised to the, uh, towards the BJP. What then is I the rationale to... behind this entire budget being about employment? I want to reply on all three points. One panelist raised on MSME, one on women's, and one on obviously Agniveed. So now there are eight measures which have been taken on MSMEs, and this these eight measures have come from by requests of people within the industry. One being working capital, one was about a collateral by the government. Now the fact that there are 262 uh, clusters that currently exist, be in Ludhiana, Tripura, etc. Today you have 163 clusters in one budget which have been announced. The small scale within to be completed within 45 days the stress managed assets, the account for the NPAs, etc., the 90 day NPA proposal by MSMEs, um, the fact that mudra loans have gone up from 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs, which is substantive. Uh, you have 300 private sector companies in the middle class income tax relief, simplifying the income tax, the standard deduction from 50,000 to 75,000 the rate of tax re reduced accordingly for the middle class. We talk about affordable housing. That has been an incentive for working women too. Loans, taxation, capital gains and 12.5% as a simplifying process. They talked about women. This is the first time you have 3 lakh crores allocated for women when it comes to hostels so that working women are not inconvenienced, creches so that mothers who have just given birth are given the same facility as others. And more importantly, if we as a society know that a woman always wants a house, even the housing loans for women have been reduced so that it's a simpler process for her to get a home and is an incentive too. Now you come to Agniveer. You know, the lot has been said time and again. I just want to ask one question. The Bharatiya Janata Party, after 60 years of this dismal performance of the Congress Party, comes up with a one rank, one pension, you have a problem. <clears throat> when we give befitting answers like surgical strikes, you have a problem and you spread a false narrative there too. When it comes to Agni Veed, you have questioned every single step rather than being supportive and listening to what our armed forces and our armed personnel who are working as Javans and even the ones who have retired, what they want. So all this talk about saying that, you know, this budget is not uh, thematic, I would say the theme of this budget has only been employment. If we have tapped every avenue, be it education, uh, employment, MSME, productivity, land, opportunity, youth, middle class, energy security, uh, new generation reforms, as well as technology, if all aspects have been dealt with and addressed, please kindly read the budget rather than just critiquing and spreading a false narrative. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm left with a few minutes. I'm going to give uh, Dr. Tripathi a chance to respond as well. I'll come to the others in a bit, but I just have a few minutes left. Dr. Tripathi, go ahead, please. Savika, my BJP panelists just listed out employment, EMPL, OBI. I want to say, I want to say that this is an NDA budget, Nitish Naidu Development Allocation budget. Because when you talk about employment, what is your intent? What is your plan? It's just 500 companies will have 20,000 interns in five years. That goes to 4,000 interns per year. You and me both know that a corporate uh, sector employing 4,000 interns per year is actually not possible. You know, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. You picked up the apprenticeship scheme from the Congress manifesto, you made it uh, um, uh, internship scheme, but you never talked about the annoying trade deficit that we have with China. You never talk about the shrinking manufacturing sector. You are not talking about a, how flawed GST 
and the demonetization world actually eroded the msme sectors and now you're talking about employment because you have been reduced to a something very uh, far away from a simple majority even but then also you don't have concrete plans for you have you're you're mollycoddling with your alliance partners you're allocating them thousands and thousand crores but you don't have a concrete plan for the youth of the country okay. to, be, to be fair to be fair those alliance partners in those states are a part of india so no i am saying you should have when you are reducing defense budget when you are reducing education budget when you are reducing health budget yesterday unicef came out a report that 47% of uh, the uh, children in india are acutely malnourished but you have reduced the health budget to 1.85% and your okay. priorities that's what i'm saying with okay. this election All right. was a okay. clear cut okay so the congress feels that the priorities are completely off the mark here as far as this budget is concerned. I'm left with the last one minute, 30 seconds to Nasir Sali and 30 seconds to uh, uh, Manaswi. My four core points remain unanswered. Uh, they regard number one, what is the MSME registration? These are all textbooks in grade two and speak on television on, and on parliament. Execution remains the key challenge for the BJP. Number two, I heard my panelists talk about women. I must tell you, women's safety, you should be, uh, you know, people in Noida completely understand what women's safety is all about as far as UP is concerned. And being the largest state in the country, it is dismal. If, I mean, NCRB reports tells you, so I don't know what budget allocations are happening towards, uh, uh, towards women and their safety. Number three, the biggest issue today is, uh, we, we spoke about uh, employment generation. My biggest quick question is labor force participation. Please look at that number. It will be absolutely shocking. There are two right. important data points from there that come up. People between 15 to age group of 15 to 29, Looking for employment, not getting employment. Okay. And there, and there's a big challenge of skill sets and semi skill set issue. They're not employable. Okay. The education system is packing up. So you know, these yes. announcements, big budget announcements are great, but what is what is the discussion today on smart cities? They're not even talking about smart cities. Right. The discussion has happened around smart cities. They have become I don't know which cities. We don't know. So okay. all the past promises made by this government now are being questioned in parliament and rightfully so because we represent the members of the public through parliament through television debates through discussions okay. and through white all debates. right i've i've, I've, I've run out of time okay okay i'm running out that. of time i'm running out of time manasvi literally 20 seconds well, i'll just take 20 seconds i i feel that this is less of an indian budget than more of an andhra budget and bihar budget and wherein it has been termed as an uh, Indian budget, well, well, that is not the case. While we talk about when, when the initial budgets of NDA 1 and 2 of uh, Modi Sarkar came out, it was talking about Startup India, it was talking about uh, Skilling Up India, Digital India and various other schemes of the country. But this time it is not talking about anything and that is what is sad about it. It does not have a blueprint, it does not uh, have, have done what what was done in the past what where have we come as a country. It does not talk to, about that electrifying India, okay. toilets in India. All these things are gone, a bygone thing. What it looks like, I was uh, waiting for the fact that blatantly it will not look like a, 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 a Naidu and a Nitish budget, but it looks like from a naked eye, it clearly looks like it's only okay. for Bihar and Chandrabha, Chandrababu Naidu. That's what is sad. Okay. You have your political majburiya, but that should not come out in the budget and look at look look like that you are just giving everything for them. So this should have been stopped, okay. and you should listen okay. to the opposition. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.